It'll be a pleasure, Mr. Brown. Yes. Goodbye, sir. Hello, and welcome. I'm Winston Essex. You've caught me at a quiet time. My office here at Mansfield House is usually quite hectic. Visitors coming and going, staff meetings, the telephone ringing incessantly. You know, it's amazing how we take things for granted. Like the uh, telephone, an instrument of communication. It's there for us to conduct business, to make contact with our friends, our loved ones. Even when they're far away, the telephone brings them closer. What a comforting thought to know that we can reach out to anyone in the world in an instant. But what if someone was trying to reach out to us from the next world? I wonder how comforting that would be. What did you see up there, anyhow? Oh, I thought I heard something. Angie, was that you in the alley? No. I walked this morning. You OK now? Sure. And just shake a leg. We'll be late. Markham, Ox, and Hirschfield. Good morning. Hold the line, please. I'll see if he's in. Good morning, Angie. You're looking exceptionally gorgeous this morning. Still holding. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Barker is still in court. Would you care to leave your name? Thank you. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Hirschfield. There's still no answer at that number. Yes, sir. I'll keep trying. Yes, Mr. Hirschfield. I know it's important. Uh, 
I'll get it. Back on Max and Hirschfield. Good morning. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, we have a very bad connection. If you would hang up and dial again. Yes, I'll take the message. Thank you. Marco Marx and Hirschfield, good morning. Sorry, I can't hear you. Yes. No, I'm sorry, he's not in here. Yes. Hello? Barbara. Who is this? You must listen. Barbara. Who is this? What's wrong? I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm hearing planes that aren't there, and I'm getting these weird phone calls. Weird dirty or weird weird? Someone's calling my name. It's probably one of those jokers in the mailroom. I hadn't thought of that. Suppose we play a little joke of our own. Switch desks. Thanks, Angie. My pleasure. I'll give that freak an earful. Marx and Hirschfield, good morning. Barbara. Who is this? Barbara. Love. I love you. I love you. There's this terrific uh, squirrel migration in, uh, in Arkansas. I was measured for my shroud today. You were measured for your what? My shroud. No, I, was, I was in my office in the middle of closing a deal when two of the guys came in and started uh, measuring me. For your shroud? My shroud. I don't get it. Well, I mean, they said it wasn't a bachelor party they were giving me, it was a wake. I mean, you know, the man who marries has died to the good life. Tell me they were wrong. Suppose they're right. Hey, it was just a corny joke. And a little morbid, too, now that I think about it. Barbara, it's all right, you know. What is? To talk about him, think about him. It isn't that. You mean when I started talking about my bachelor party, you didn't think about Mike talking about his? Michael never had a bachelor party. There wasn't time for one. You know, I married him very soon after we met. Yeah. And uh, when they shipped him out, we were just beginning to really know each other. All right, but it happened. And you loved him. All right, I accept that. I'm not in competition with your memories or with Michael. If it wasn't Michael, what was it? I was thinking about some calls I got 
At the office today, nuisance calls. You bad? Scary. Very scary. Look, why don't, why don't you quit that job right now? You were going to leave it next week anyway. I'd rather stick it out. Maybe it's nothing. I feel it right now. Well, if it happens again, I want you to know that I would be very happy to take you away from all that right now and start keeping you... In the style to which I'd like to become accustomed. Exactly the style I had in mind. Talk to Mr. Stewart. Yeah, he said he'll report it to the phone company. Which means he'll do absolutely nothing. Bargain marks and her shield. One moment, please. Bargain marks and her shield.
surprise. And a nice one. Hello, Ed. I was beginning to think we were never going to see you down here again. It has been a while. Your neighbors miss you. And so does your little boat. She needs care and attention, you know. If you're not going to use her, you ought to sell her to somebody who'll take care of her and enjoy her. I guess I should. Of course, nobody will ever get more pleasure out of her than Mike did. Oh, I'm sorry. It's OK, Ed. We could talk about him. Well, I've thought about it a lot. Mike must have been hurt bad before he ever climbed into that raft after the plane crashed, or otherwise, you know he'd have found some way to sail her to port. Still, maybe he was luckier than that other fella, drifting all that time, watching his buddies die, and then dying himself just after he got spotted. Yeah, do you think you could recommend a broker who might sell the promise for me? Sure, I know just a man. Say, it's funny you turning up this way. Why do you say that? Well, a couple of days ago, I was here. And I looked over this way, and there was a fella who seemed to be checking out the promise. I thought for a minute it was Mike. <laughs> I know that's, that's impossible, but just for a second. Did you talk to him? No. The time I strolled over here, he was gone. Anyway, the cabin sounds great. 180 degree view, huge fireplace, nearest neighbor a quarter of a mile away. No uh, television. No telephone. I'm sorry. I keep waiting for it to ring. Well, you haven't had any more calls, have you? I stayed away from the apartment all day, so he may have tried. He? I thought you weren't sure whether it was a man or a woman. At the office, I wasn't, but here the voice is much clearer. A voice you've heard before? It might be. I've heard thousands of voices on the phone. I'll get this, sir. Nobody. He could have jumped to another roof. Hey, you're trembling. Yes? Thank you. There you are. Thanks. Shepard? So, in addition to these crank phone calls, Mrs. Shepard, you also feel that you're being watched? Well, the other day, the day I got the first calls, 
I did have the feeling someone was watching me in the parking lot. But you didn't actually see anyone? No. And last night? I thought I heard someone on the roof. Well, maybe a stray cat. Maybe. And maybe someone could have jumped to the next roof when I went out. Well, about the calls, uh, have you noticed any particular pattern? They come in the afternoon, at night, in the office, at home. You're going to die. Death is close. Sounds like a threat. You're getting married soon. Next week. Uh, well, maybe the uh, caller's just a disappointed boyfriend. Somebody who's uptight because you rejected him. I don't think so, Sergeant. Well, at least it's a way to go. Now, if you will give me a list of uh, possibilities, then I can look into it. A list? I can't even think of a single person. What about Steve? No. Who's Steve? My first husband's brother. I went with him for a while before I married Michael. You still see him? Not in months. He's married now, anyway. I broke up with him a long time before I married Michael. Well, it was a thought. Such a nice surprise. What brings you way out here? I wanted to thank you and Marion for the lovely wedding gift. Well, you could have phoned. I mean, that's a long drive. Well, anyway, I'm glad you're here. Place looks great, Marion. You've done a lot of new things with it. You haven't been here in a long time. Too long. Uh, look, if you don't mind, I'd like to finish clipping that last section of hedge. I think we can spare you. Thanks a lot. Ten minutes. It's really great seeing you, in-law. Me too. Marriage certainly agrees with Steve. Well, didn't you think it would? Well, he did work pretty hard at being the carefree bachelor. <laughs> I guess he was just waiting for the right girl. I like to think so. Oh, I'd forgotten this. Captain Bly and the Mutineers. And that was the day Steve asked me to marry him. Inspired by the good example Michael and I set. Barbara, why did you come to see us? We haven't been very close, not for a long time. Maybe not ever. I'm getting phone calls. What? These strange phone calls. Like what? Threatening, frightening. The police seem to feel that the person making these calls is someone who might have been interested in me, who would resent my marrying Keith. Someone like Steve? I don't really think that. Oh, but you're here. Look, Barbara, I know my husband. Whatever he felt for you once, he was very happy for you when he heard you were going to marry again. We both were. I believe you. Don't be angry with me, please. I'm sorry. Marion, you know, if that wasn't Steve's voice... You couldn't recognize the voice? At first, I wasn't sure, but now... Well, maybe it's all my imagination. A kind of a guilt reaction. What are you talking about? I heard Michael's voice. It was Michael's voice I heard. <laughs> All right, come on, say it. Say it, lover. Come on. I'll always love you. <laughs> promise me. I promise I'll always love you. And I promise I'll never let you love anyone else.
keep my promise. Calling your phone is out. What, what happened? I haven't wanted to tell you. I haven't known how to tell you. Tell me what? what? What's going on? I know who's been calling me and why. Okay. Who and why? It's Michael. It's my husband, Michael. You thought it was Mike's voice? It was Mike's voice. Was someone imitating him? Does that explain how this phone kept on ringing after I did this? Yes, Keith, it kept on ringing. You think I imagined it all, don't you? I'm not looking for explanations to satisfy me. I want to help you. You've been under a strain, maybe more than you've admitted. There's a, there's a doctor I know. A psychiatrist? Yes. Keith, you know me, don't you? You really think I need a doctor? He's a young guy, very bright, if you just want to talk to somebody. Maybe, I don't know. I'd like to work it out for myself. How? What are you going to do? I'll need some time. Keith, I'd like to postpone the wedding. Why? I don't know if Michael wants me to marry. Barbara. Look, Sergeant Appleton suggested a possibility. Uh, an old boyfriend, maybe. I'll need uh, that time, please. All right. When will I see you? Tomorrow, maybe. If you need anything.
And I was sure it was full. Thank you. You say your car ran out of gas? Yes, I I was I was walking and he followed me. And I I ran in here and I bolted the door. He kept trying to break in on me. Didn't you see him out on the porch? No. He was out there. He was. Please. Believe me. Help me. It's all right, dear. Everything's all right now. I guess I'd better call the police. Tomorrow's better for you. No, this other's just a coffee clutch here in the building. Let me check and I'll call you right back, okay? Okay. Sergeant, you wanted to see me. What, uh, what can I do for you? Have a chair. That's quite an experience Mrs. Shepard had yesterday. Yes. You must be very concerned. Of course I am. Is she under a doctor's care? Not that I know of. You think her problem could be emotional? Why do you ask? Well, uh, would you like a cup of coffee? No, no, thank you. Do uh, you mind if I have a cup? No, of course not. Well, I talked to her brother-in-law. Didn't get anywhere. Seems to be no one else. Could it be emotional? I guess it's possible. Imagination plus guilt reactions. It isn't unusual when a widow's about to remarry. But the other night, I was the one who heard someone on the roof. You thought you did? Yes. You saw Mrs. Shepard yesterday? Yes, on my way to the office. How did she seem? All right. You worked all day? Yeah. You were out of your office most of the afternoon, weren't you? I went to see a prospective client. The, the client's name? He wasn't at home when I got there. 
You're, you're not suggesting that I followed Barbara or something? Routine, Mr. Norton. Is it? What earthly reason would I have to try to frighten her like that? How did you meet the lady? At my office. Uh, she's a client, then. Eh? She came in after her husband died. And entrusted her inheritance to you? <laughs> inheritance? Well, you think I'm after her money? Sergeant, her inheritance was her husband's GI insurance, a few thousand dollars. That's all? That's all. She wanted somebody to invest it for her. Can you seriously consider that as a motive? Especially since we're going to be married? Okay, I was reaching, I admit. But we seem to have ruled out the brother-in-law. And she insists that there are no other relationships. So where does that leave us? Sergeant, I'm, uh, I'm gonna level with you. She thinks she's identified the voice on the phone. Go on. She's sure it's Mike Shepard. Her dead husband? Mr. Norton, uh, what the lady needs is a doctor. Thank you for loving me, Barbara.
Michael? The world's finest first mate. Take the skipper's word. Why did you change your hair? You promised you never would? Changes. Too many changes. Michael. Loyal, loving. I had to see you, believe in you. You're not what I imagined. You're cheap, ready to betray the man who loves her. No, Michael. Who are you? I was in the air with Mike, in the water, drifting with him till he died. There were no survivors. They all died. All Mike talked about was you. I can't let you marry another man. Mike still loves you. We both do. That's what kept me going so long, you. We'll all be together now. You don't believe me, do you? He's been dead for over a year. So he couldn't have followed me. And he couldn't have tried to kill me last night. They dragged the whole lake. And found nothing. And the phone calls, you think he made those two? No, they were from Michael. But I was wrong. They weren't threats. They were warnings. Warnings? He was telling me I was in danger. And when he talked about his promise, he meant his promise to look after me, to protect me no matter what. It was Michael who saved me last night. I don't have to prove it. I know it. He saved me, and then he released me. If you still want me. I don't understand it. I'm not sure I'll ever believe it. I'm just glad you're safe, here, and with me. Happy to know Keith and Barbara got married. As a matter of fact, they're honeymooning here right now. A message for them. <laughs> I'd call, but for some reason they asked to have the phone removed from their room. Oh well, people in love are entitled to their little idiosyncrasies. <laughs> oh, and uh, here are some scenes from our. Next adventure on Ghost Story. Charlie! Clinging like a leech! I fantasized, Andrew, about killing you. I even worked out the way I was going to do it. Did the plumber show up? Mm-hmm. 
He's a pretty careless fellow. He left the cover off the well. Andy, you can't leave me here in this house alone tonight. I, I have terrible nightmares. It's in the cellar. Ah! 